What is existence all about? Our friend is asking. That's a very loaded question, okay? And uh, one can sit down and go over this for days and days and days, right? But I'm just going to explain it in a nutshell. First of all, basically, existence is not something you're, you or me or anybody is going to be able to get it or comprehend it by their mind. It's not an object that we can get. The mind wants to understand things that can visualize or conceptualize and bring it to some sort of object. Because when we talk about existence, what's it about or whatever, automatically, if you pay attention to yourself, automatically, you're going to have a visualization of something because that's how the mind can understand things. Human mind can understand things in an, its own essence of existence. It has to visualize it and conceptualize it to get it because it's limited. The human mind cannot understand the infinity. Infinite. Are you familiar with infinite? Means it keeps going and going and going and going. There's no beginning to it and there's no end. It keeps going, expanding from every direction. And when you're trying to understand the infinite, you're trying to picture something. Try it right now. What is the infinite? Meditate on it, and you can see your mind is trying to have a picture of it. And that's not only you. Everybody's like that. Because you're trying to understand a phenomena that is beyond your imagination. So you can't understand it. You have to conceptualize it, and you have to make an imagery note out of it so you can get an idea of it. So, having said that, what is existence all about? Then, now we need to put it in a frame of work with a beginning and the end, so we kind of understand it with our thinking mind, because the thinking mind can understand infinity. It doesn't make sense to it. So it wants this to be in some frame that it can get. So, the truth of existence is, existence is all there is, and it's always been here, and it's always going to be here. It's an expression of the consciousness. It's an expression of a phenomena of, of something which is, is everywhere, and it expresses itself continuously in different ways. It, it expresses itself in human forms. It comes as vegetation. It expresses itself as rocks and mountains. And in a liquid form, it becomes water. It becomes air. Then there's other planets and space and other alien forms. Maybe, I don't know, I haven't had encounters with them. I've had encounters with trans-dimensional beings, but I haven't had a UFO land in, in behind my house. So I see them, so I don't know what the story is. They are there, they're not there, whatever. It doesn't matter. But I've had other beings, trans-dimensional beings, appear to my life and disappear and whatever. But it just is everything. Something which has been here before you and I come, and something which is going to be, be here after the form is gone, and it's doing its thing. That's what existence is all about. A presence. Now, 
luckily, thank God, or maybe unfortunately or fortunately, we can't understand it with our thinking mind. But we are one with it. We're a part of the existence. So I can't understand it when I think about it, but when I don't think about it, when I don't think at all, <coughs> excuse me, when I have no thoughts and I'm just sitting here and there's no thoughts in my mind, whether I have my eyes closed or I have my eyes open, what happens is I become one with the existence. I'm always one with it regardless, okay? Because now you can come and say, well, if you're thinking, are you separated from existence? No. These are all matter of speaking because language is very limited and it's impossible to convey the nature of the being through language because it's beyond the language. Language has come from the being. The being doesn't come from the language. So we cannot use language to ex explain the being. But the, the being, the presence, you dive into it and you have this sense of oneness or experience of oneness with it in the absence of your thinking mind. When you become quiet inside, you're not thinking, then boom, you tap into it. And all of a sudden, you're in this fifth dimensional realm of oneness. And it's amazing. It's because I, yesterday I had lunch with a friend of mine and he was telling me Zarathustra, I, had, I was in Thailand and I had this Satori experience. And in the Satori experience, I was one with everything. I could see life force running through the plants. I could just see how the energy was going through the trees and the plants. And I could see how everything is connected to everything. And he was very excited. He was genuinely sharing with me this experience he had. Okay? So, it lasts for three or four days that he was in total oneness with everything. But when, it's, it's, it was saying, it was like better than any orgasm I've had in my life. It was very orgasmic. It was like beyond, okay? But when it's happening, when you tap into the higher consciousness, you, you're, all of a sudden you jump into the fifth dimensional realm of the oneness. What happens? You're experiencing the yumminess. You're experiencing the orgasm of life. You're experiencing this explosion of the love and oneness and being connected with everything but at that moment there is the absence of your thinking mind there is no you there because if you become one with that then where is you you have dissolved into the oneness so there is no Raphael or there's no Zarathustra, it's only the oneness, it's only the collect, collective. Then there is no you there during that experience to say, oh wow, it's amazing, I am one with everything, because there is no you being one with everything, it's only oneness. So you can't just be in there and say, wow, I'm one with everything, because it's in the absence of you. You have to get out of the way, or you have to die. And when I say that die, it means your ego, your sense of separation needs to go away. And then it's the oneness. Now, my friend, 
experience, he went into this realm. There was a duration from the beginning to the end for three and a half days, four days. He was one. And then he came back, descendant, to the third dimension. Now it becomes a person separated from the source and now referring to it from this place saying, wow, that was an incredible experience I had. But now it's back into the sense of separation. But when you're one with it, there is no you there claiming this experience as amazing as yourself because you are a part of the whole thing. 